as more and more drugs flood our cities and towns. So the value of a little bit over 40,000 dollars. I mean, you get up to about a kilo, it's a couple of millions. New Zealanders are now among the biggest users of methamphetamine in the world. What, our ideology? Drugs and gangs go hand in hand. Drug-related crime is a focus for police. Oh, oh, you behind your back! And they're fighting to stamp it out. You surrender my arm, police. You've got nothing on me. It looks like a good grandma of me here, mate, doesn't it? Yeah. Welcome to the largest police district in the country, County's Monaco, yeah. as they battle the billion-dollar drug trade. This is their story. Welcome to New Zealand's War on Drugs. You know they need to move fast, or the crims could escape the net. On a rural property in the Bombay Hills, the armed defender squad are on their way to raid a suspected meth cooking outfit. While the Papakura police sets up a checkpoint blocking all escape routes out of the area. We're lucky in this situation, it's a rural dead end street, so anyone coming out, we're just stopping to, to make sure they're not involved and they're not trying to escape with either product or any equipment or firearms that we have. It isn't long before the armed offender squad has the target secured. They've pulled out uh, one person from this house behind us, and the offender is now being spoken to by some of my detectives at, uh, at the Papakura police station. Lab equipment and lethal chemicals used for making methamphetamine have been found at the property, so it's deemed too dangerous for the investigation team to move forward until the clandestine team clear the lab. The chemicals these guys use are dangerous in themselves. Combine them in the mixtures they need to make this stuff, uh, anything could happen, so we don't take any chances. The chemicals are highly prized by the criminal world. It's big business, and some people have a lot to lose. We always have armed police staff at these sorts of things, so that if someone wants to take it, uh, they're going to have an uphill battle. Al is shocked to find the target of this raid has accumulated two ute loads of lab equipment and dangerous chemicals used for the purpose of manufacturing meth. You can see the extraction fans and uh, pyrex dishes which the methamphetamine ends up in and glass we hear that they do the chemical processes in. With the clan lab officers keeping one step ahead, the investigation team move in. And despite the clear evidence he's been cooking, they have no idea of how much and for who. He's uh, admitted to, uh, to banking last night. Uh, he's told us so far that it's for his own personal use. So again, we're looking for evidence to, to refute that or to confirm that. The Manurewa Tactical Crime Unit has just raided a suspected tinny house. It would appear nobody is at home. Well, that makes it easy. Hey, where's Khaleesi? The property may be secure. But the danger now arises from the suspects returning with force. And Benny knows this all too well. So if they turn up, then just grab them and walk them in the house. Now the search for drugs can begin. At the rear of the property, Constable John Zessler attacks the garage door with good old brute force. What they find is a surprise to all. Huh. So it looks like they're just uh, either setting up or, or they already have set up and packed up. Obviously a couple of growing lights and, and two uh, small small plants. But we had no info to, or information to say that, that they were growing here anyway. So um, yeah, a bit of a bonus I guess. We have raided a pea lab in the Bombay Hills. So far they have removed the suspected cook and packed two bootloads of chemistry equipment and dangerous toxic chemicals. You're getting a reasonable chemical smell coming from here, so uh, you can appreciate what the bigger ones are sort of smells of there. So that's just two ute loads from a, a medium-sized 
lab. With the right amount of pseudoephedrine, a lab of this size could produce a kilo of methamphetamine with a street value of a million dollars. Just weeks ago, this ESR team investigated another P-Lab of the same size, hidden in a suburban garage, and the amount of pee produced there was alarming. This container weighs 614 grams approximately. Um, our initial testing indicate that it contains methamphetamine. Whether or not it contains something else as well, we don't know how pure it, it might be. It could, you know, it could be sort of 5%, it could be 70%. But if this was going to be sold as final product methamphetamine at the cost of approximately a thousand dollars a gram. You're looking at about half a million dollars. Taking down this lab made a significant dent on the availability of methamphetamine on the streets of South Auckland. And now looking at the Bombay raid, Al believes his team has also made a huge impact on the meth market. It's a, it's a big money business uh, and they're making a lot of money off a lot of poor a lot, of, a lot of people in the community, not just poor people, but they're, they're laughing at us, laughing at our society, they're taking money. These people can do these things for some time, they get away with it for a while, but eventually we're going to come knocking and they'll get the rude awakening in the door and the, the long arm of the law will reach out and grab them. And it's a good thing the police have busted this meth cook, as there are plenty of disturbing items attracting Al's attention. So we've got a, what we've got here is a night vision device. Um, they're not particularly uncommon, but most people don't need them in their home. Uh, binoculars and uh, machete. Again, machetes are a fairly common piece of equipment, but not many people keep them in their, in their kitchen. It appears the suspect has something to protect, and Al will have to dig a little deeper if he's to find what it is. The Manurewa Tactical Crime Unit has raided a suspected tinny house. And while they have found a few small cannabis plants, so far there are no signs that they're dealing. But they are finding evidence of drug use. A bit of cannabis in there. Just a bit of a homemade bomb. Smoking weed. Suddenly, the first signs that something more sinister is going on. What is that? Gun. This homemade replica is only good for intimidation, but it's still a sobering reminder of the dangers of the job. Drugs and, and firearms and offensive weapons sort of go hand in hand. Um, and a lot of lot of tinny houses or drug houses we go to, we seem to be recovering weapons. And uh, unfortunately, we're just recovering more and more of them. In the bedroom.